Today we are going to be doing our Sunburst 4th of July wreath. So for those that bought a kit, I'm going to kind of go very shortly through what you're going to do. And for those that didn't, you can just skip ahead a couple minutes and I will be getting started then, okay? So I'm going to scroll down and we'll get started. Okay, so everything that you see here is what comes in the kit. So you have your pick with the little stars. You have your wire frame, 14 inches. Okay. Your star itself. Okay. Three colors of match, red, white, and blue. And then you get your kit that has all of your ribbon and everything else in it. So all you're going to need to do is take everything out, okay? You have four zip tie cable mounts. So you'll be using those to attach your sign, okay? And then you have all of these ribbons, okay? So you have four yards of this, four yards of this, four yards of this, four yards of this, three yards of this, and close to two yards of this. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take all of these and you're going to cut them at 14 inches. Okay? So I'm going to use my little tool that I like and I will just, this is cut at seven inches, so I will just wrap my ribbon around it. Now you will have just a slight bit of excess and that's okay, that's what you should have. Okay? So you're going to do this with all your ribbons. Okay? See that's about how much excess you're going to have. Now I do that just in case something happened and it was cut slightly short. So that way you won't be short. So see you have seven of this one. You'll have plenty of all of these together. Okay? You just make your little ends by bending over, cutting at an angle. So you want to do that with all your ribbons. Okay? So set that aside. Your mesh, you just want to open it. This is all metallic mesh, and it's red, royal blue, and white. This is the white with the tinsel stripe in it. Okay. It's iridescent. It could be called tinsel or iridescent, either way. What I like to do is take my three colors together. This just makes it a little bit faster. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Now, just going to put something heavy on it to keep it still. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and the first thing I'm going to do is get a clean edge. So it's a really good idea whenever you get a new roll going to get a clean edge because often it's not really a very clean edge. So, okay. All right, now what you want to do is you want to cut every 10 inches. So I'm just going to use my board here so that I can make several cuts. Okay. Okay. So you want between 26 and 28 of these. Okay. So that's what you want to do before you get started. And then pretty much the rest of this video is going to be how to assemble it. Whether you bought the kit or not, because you can always go and find 
similar supplies at Craft Outlet, Trendy Tree, or the Wreath Shop. So all kits are going to come with pipe cleaners. Now I'm going to cut mine in half. But you don't have to cut yours in half. You can leave them whole. That is strictly up to you. I just like to cut mine in half because then it just makes it stretch longer. And you don't have to go back later and trim the back. So if you leave them long, you'll have to go back to your project and trim off the back later. But if you're more comfortable with them whole, that's fine. Just leave them whole. Okay, so I am going to go and cut this up. And then when I come back, I'll tell you how we're going to cut this. Tinsel tubing. And I'll show you how to start assembling it. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I have everything cut out. I cut 27 of these. So that's what I anticipate using. And the way I like to do mine is I like to do them in bundles. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm ready. I've gotten all these cut out and I cut out 27 of the sets of three because we're going to put them together in a set of three in what I like to call a bundle. So I just find it a lot faster and a lot easier to do things this way. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll separate them. I have my pipe cleaners here that I cut in half. I have all of my ribbon here that is cut. Okay? And I have my frame. So what I'm going to do, and there's two ways you can do this. Okay, so one of the ways that you can do this is to use a bodabra. So this makes it really easy. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take it the way it likes to roll. See how it just wants to roll. You're going to take two opposite sides and you're going to pull it apart just like this. Then you just want to put the little points in the middle to meet and then scrunch it up just like that. You see that? So this is kind of like making a petal, okay? But this is what we're going to do. So we're going to take it, we're going to stick it right down. This really is just acting as a holder. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Like I said before, <laughs> you can also just use your pipe cleaner. You can use a chip clip, or you can use your hand. Okay, so just pull them apart. Scrunch it right up in the middle, like this, place it down, okay, pull, meet, scrunch, okay, there we go. Now, I will go ahead and take some ribbon, I'm going to put two ribbons together, I'm going to fold it over, find the center, pinch it in the center, I'm going to pull this stack out put this on top. So this is a lot like making a um, curl except you're pulling it out instead of curling it up. So then what I like to do, so I have all of them together, I have my ribbons on top, I like to push this up like this, squeeze it here in the center, okay, and then twist my pipe cleaner. Just like that. And the reason I do that is because it makes it a nice tight fit. Okay? And then you're going to take this little bundle and you're going to take it to your wreath and you're going to go in between layers two and three. Now if you don't have a wire form like this, if it only has two, then you would just pick one. If it has three, then you would just do the middle. Okay, and you just twist it on. No one twist it on pretty tight. And this is what's going to form our sunburst. Okay, so we're, I'm just going to keep making these little bundles, just doing the exact same thing. Okay, so let's do one just with our hands this time. 
Okay. So pull, meet, pinch, put it in our hand. Pull, meet, pinch, right there. Pull, meet in the middle, pinch it up. There we go. Then we'll take two new ribbons. the center, put it on top, get a pipe cleaner, fold it over like this so you can get that nice tight twist. And there we go. We have number two made. So we'll keep going and making these and then we'll start putting them on our frame. <laughs> Hello Bella. So I do like to alternate the colors I have on top just because it makes it easier to see all the colors. Okay. So whichever one I started with last, I have a tendency to do that one first. It makes it a little bit easier to remember which way I'm alternating. Okay. There's only three so it's not really that difficult. I do this a lot when I'm doing curly ones as well. So, okay. Here we go. Then I'll just grab two more ribbons. Put it down. Grab a pipe cleaner. You see why I just use a half? Because it really is quite enough to do this. And then I can save some pipe cleaners for later. Alright. So there we go. Alright. Okay. So let's keep grabbing three. So we did white up last time. Let's just do it on the bottom. Okay. So you just keep following this exact same process. Okay. Then grab two new ribbons. Okay. Pinch in the middle. On there it goes. And then tie in the center. Pull it up. And twist. There we go. So we left off with blue, so we can start blue first this time. Okay. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can make all of your bundles and then put them on or you can make them and put them on as you go. It's strictly up to you and what you want. Now a few of the bundles we're going to do just slightly different. So let me do this one and I'm going to show you that. Okay. All right. So, we're going to be using the tinsel mesh. So, what we're going to do is we just are going to cut it in three equal pieces. And I just folded it into threes and cut it. It is just slightly over a yard. It's about a yard and a couple inches. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bundle here. And instead of ribbon, we're going to use this tubing. So I'm just going to put that in there. So this essentially is the same way you make petals to go on flowers, except you are using it on a wreath. That's regular wreath. Okay, so I'm going to take my tinsel tubing, I'm going to make a circle, I'm just going to twist it and make a double circle, okay? So all you need is a double circle, and then you're going to pinch it in the center make sure that you have enough okay on the sides that it's not going to come out so you want to make sure you have enough excess grab one of your pipe cleaners get your bundle place this right on top and then tie your tie around it so everything else will be the same the only thing that's different is we're using the tinsel tubing instead of ribbon there's a couple reasons I like to do this. One is it makes the tinsel tubing stand out a little bit more if you don't add ribbon to it in the same, you know, in the same tie. And the other thing is, is it kind of breaks up the wreath a little bit and just adds a little bit more interest. So it's also really great if you have leftover tubing and you don't have as much ribbon, then you you know you can just do that. So we ended with white, so let's start with the white, and we can end with red. Okay, I mean, you know, in the scheme of things, this isn't going to make a huge difference, but I think it just really helps to see all the colors, so I like to do it when I can. Alright, so we'll just grab a couple new. Ribbons, pinch, right there in the center, there we go, all right, there we go, all right, so let's do another one of the tubing ones. It doesn't matter which order you do these in. Yeah, it only matters when you go to put it on. So it doesn't really make any difference. So make your double loop. Okay. And then just pinch it in the center. Make sure you have enough excess out. So it's not going to come loose. Right there. Okay. All right, and let's make a blue at the top. Put that there. Okay. So I have three of these I'm going to make. So when you're doing things on wreaths, it's a really good idea to, to have balance. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can do a triangle. That is an excellent way. And, or you can do diagonal. So if you have one here, you want one there. If you have one here, you want one there. It just helps to bring balance. So let's go ahead and do the last one. So just 
make our double little circle pinch it in the middle there we go all right so we did blue let's do red this time Just tie it off. Here we go. It's really nice to get that nice tight seal because what that does is one, it helps it to stand up because that's what you want. What you're getting with this kind of wreath is is the nice volume. Okay. So now we'll just work with the ribbon. Two new ribbons, get the center, pinch it. Okay, and tie it off. So if you're doing these and you find that you have a lot of fray, one thing you can do is spray it with the E6000 adhesive spray, but I would suggest that you spray it, pull the ribbons like this, and just spray the bottom part. Now usually with this metallic, especially if you get it from a good store, you really shouldn't have any problems with it. It should be fine. There's always going to be a minimal amount. But if you're not messing with your mesh a lot, you really shouldn't have a lot of it. So the key is to not just not really mess with it a lot. As long as you're just not messing with it a whole lot, you should be just fine. So touch it as little as possible. And you also want to cut it with a good tool. So I use a um, rotary cutter from Fiskars. So, or Fiskars. I'm not really sure how you say that. Terrible with pronouncing things. <laughs> so, you can get them anywhere too. You can get them from Walmart. You can get them from craft stores, Amazon. It's a great thing to have. These mats are also a great thing to have. So these are self-healing mats. So no matter how many times you cut on them, they're not going to be torn up. It's pretty handy. If you're looking for these, I have them on my affiliate link that's in the description. Because I love my Amazon. So we're just going to keep doing this until we get our bundles all wrapped up. Okay. 
So we're slowly but surely getting through our bundles. Grab a couple more ribbons. So then you can see I have, so when I selected my ribbons, I did a lot of red, white, and blue, and a lot of them are the darker colors. So I did grab a few that had some white in it so it would stand out. Because if you have this many colors and they kind of are all the same color, they can tend to want to blend in together. So just adding in a white base really helps to make it pop a little bit more. So it's always a good idea. Don't be afraid to add in colors. Because you know what? If you don't like it, you can always take it out. But you will often be surprised at how great colors look together. Okay. And just remember, if this hurts your hands, then you can use the Bodabra or pipe cleaners, or you can use um, chip clips. Sorry, took me a second to think of the name. <laughs> okay. Also, if you're having trouble, if it hurts your hands to do things in the middle, you can just take the two middle pieces and meet them and then scrunch them up. That will do the same effect of pulling it. It just makes it a little bit faster if you pull it, but you don't have to do it that way. You can just fold them in the middle. Whatever way is easier for you is the way you should do it. There's not a right way and there's not a wrong way. As long as you come up with the same petal look, it's fine. Okay, let's do one of our white ones. So I don't have a lot of the white ones because it's more like a pop of color. Or a pop of difference, I guess I should say. Okay. So one good thing about cutting everything out at the same time is that when you're, you know, when you get done, you'll know that you have everything you need to do your project. So that's why I like to cut everything out in advance, go ahead and do them and then add them on. That's a personal preference. And if you weren't able to get this kit, I can tell you that um, Hobby Lobby 
has some of these metal stars. Now they're solid colors, but you can use the exact same thing. They have blue, they have red, and they have white. So you could run over there and get one, and then just get mesh of red, white, and blue, and some red, white, and blue ribbons, and you'll get the same look. So. And any pipe cleaners that are red, white, or blue look fine with this. I was about to put that ribbon on backwards. I don't think I want that. Okay. So we're getting pretty close. these colors pretty. I like to put these kind of bright primary type colors together. They just look so striking together. jump in and do a white one.
Another great trick is if you have one that is fraying a tiny bit, make that the piece that goes on the center. And then you don't have to worry about it. Because it will be completely covered up. I will warn you, your hands can get tired doing this just like when you do flowers because it is a lot of scrunching up. But like flowers, it comes out with a great result. So, This is our last little stack. You can see we're dwindling down our ribbons. Stick a white ribbon in here. Getting pretty close. It's going to be nice and wild. And this does turn out to be a fairly wide wreath because you are stretching these out. And that's one of the reasons why you want to use the center and not the outside because that would make it even larger. Okay. 
two left. You see how this one is kind of fraying a little bit on this edge? So I'll use this piece in the middle. And then you can't see it. So it works out well. Now, we've gotten all our bundles made. Now, we are ready to start loading the frame. Alright. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three and I'm going to set them over here. That way, I can keep track of where they are because I want to put them strategically in with everything else. Okay, so there's the other one. All right. So I'm just kind of moving these aside so I have a little bit of space to work with. frame. You're always going to have a little bit. Alright, so there are six sections in this, so I expect to get at least four in every section. I usually start the first section with one to two more, so I usually anticipate, okay, five in the first section and four in the rest of the sections. And the reason is because as you load these in, it's going to get fuller and fuller, especially in the center, because this wreath will be both in the center and on the outside. So, you just separate your pipe cleaners, put it in between two and three. And then tie it off. Nice and tight. And then slide it over. Now it will seem like that you are going to not have enough, but don't worry about that. You will. It really does fill up as you go around. So. And you do want them going in this direction, so some in, some out. You don't want to put it side to side. And I 
I am trying to just make sure I don't have two ribbons together. But if I do get two ribbons together, I'm not going to get upset about it. Okay, so this is number four. See, when you first start, it doesn't look like, looks like you're going to have to put a lot more than that in the section. But then, as it starts filling up, and they start bumping up against each other, then it fills it up. Okay. So don't be concerned that there is a little bit of space in here, because you want there to be a little bit of space you want to kind of pull out your ribbons a little bit make sure you can see them so we're going to have things that are going to fill that up and as it gets pushed around it's going to start pushing on the one before it okay so once you've gotten five in the first section just go on to the second section and start loading that I just keep doing this same process over and over. Like this. So this will be four in this section. Okay, so I consider the one that has the most in it to be kind of my top section. Right here, this one. Okay, so I want to strategically plan out where I put these because I want to put one at the bottom and one on each side. So you can either go ahead and put one on the bottom or you can wait till you get there. I'm just going to go ahead and do it and then I can fill in around it. Okay. I know I want to put one in this section so I'll get this section started and then I'll put it in there and I want to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to put it about midway, so I'm going to put about two on, and then I will stick it on. And remember, you're going to have a little bit of fray, but you shouldn't have too much. So, I put one in, I'm going to put another one in, and then I will put one of the tinsel tubing in. So, okay. then we'll grab one of the tinsel tubing ones. In. 
All right. So we need to put one more in this section. One more in this section. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go over and do this section because I'm going to put the other tinsel in. So I'm going to put one more in. Then I will put the tinsel tubing in. Okay. So I'll grab my tinsel tubing one. And I'll put that one in. Then we just need to put one more in that section. Let's see. Here we go. And then we just have two more sections. that one. Okay, so you see we have move this around a little bit. Okay. We have two more sections to do. But you see how full that is? As you get going around, boy, it really fills up. So, And this is one of those wreaths where really you could put more in if you would like to, but you don't need to. So, and if you put too many in, you're not going to be able to spread out your ribbon. So you want to be careful about not putting too many in. I like to do about, try to make it about 27. Because you can really use up some ribbon and uh, some mesh if you just keep going and going. So. Okay. But you see, one of the reasons that I like to use the smaller cut in half pipe cleaner is because then you don't have to go back here and trim it off. So it just makes it a little bit faster if you don't have to go through and trim that off. So I just find that works a little better for me. But if you have trouble with your hands, you might want to use the whole one. It just kind of really depends on how things go. All right. Look at that. See, I love this. It's almost like a flower. That's why I love this so much. Okay. So we are on the last section.
So I'm making sure I put some on each side so that that tinsel tie is pretty much in the middle of the bottom. So we have one left. Okay, so what I do is I will come back and just kind of move things around, pull these up. You want to pull these up. Okay, and then you can see if there's any areas that really just kind of need another one, like maybe right here. Yeah, so that's where we'll put our extra one. That's it, we got all of our bundles in. You can kind of push from the bottom. All right, now, now that you have it all in, what you can do is just kind of go around, fluff up your ribbons a little bit. Kind of move them around a little bit so you can see everything. And this will cover any little spots you have. We also have a few other things we're going to be adding in. So if you see a couple little areas, don't worry. Because what you're going to do, once we get this done, is you're going to cut these, well, three stars and we're going to look for spots that need it and we're going to put those in. Okay, see so what kind of spread out your ribbon a little bit. Okay. That way you get to see it all. moving it around. See sometimes it can get stuck up there. Just kind of pull it out. Make sure none of it's sticking somewhere. Definitely want to make sure you can see that tinsel. But I tell you, with the wreath like this, it is so full and it is pretty busy, so it's just kind of anywhere you look, your eye's going to catch something. Okay, all right. So you see how it's looking so far? All right, now. What we're going to do is take this out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these apart, trim it off, okay, like this and then I'm going to pull this out a little bit like this. Come in, buddy. 
Oh, I'm eating, so like, what's up, baby? Hey, hey. I had a question. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so once you get these three cut up, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take this star, take the price tag off. There's a few ways that you can attach something like this. Okay, so you could use, let's see where it's going. Okay, right here. So you could use a bead smith and pop a little hole in it. Now, if you want to do something like this, you would want to do it on the other side. Okay, so there we go, just like that. Okay, the other way is that you can take these okay and for those that got the kit it's included and you can just put a dab of glue and it has adhesive on it and you just want to put it inside the stars in about four places and then we're going to tie it down for those that have a beadsmith you can just punch a few little holes in it okay there we go so that's one, two, there's three points. That's probably good, but you could do four, okay. Now if you don't have one of these, you can get one of these at Amazon. It is on my influencer list. This is an awesome tool because you can punch little holes in them. All right, now. If you're going to be using your mounts, make sure you put a little bit of glue on it and glue it in there. And then you would want to use a full size pipe cleaner and just run it right through there, okay? And then tie it on. Since I'm going to be using my punched pieces, I'm going to use wire and I'm going to use really thin wire because it's a lot harder to see it. So I'm just going to cut pieces about, oh, about 18 inches long and I'll just run it right through that tiny little hole I made. Now you can get this wire at uh, Hobby Lobby, it's very fine filament wire so just makes it a little bit harder to pick out so if I'm doing a sign and I put a hole in it I'd rather just put, use some of this because it's just a little bit harder to see just an aesthetic thing <laughs> so okay I like to take them flip them over and make a little twist in it just so it's not going to come out and it's, you're really not going to see it from the other side okay one more You can use this or you can take this off and use that hole and put some pipe cleaner or wire through it. So you see how this is kind of the perfect base for this little star right in the center. So I'm just going to take my wire I'm going to kind of move this mesh aside and I'm going to go right down to the frame. So see here's the frame. And so I want to make it tight enough so it's not going to come off, but not so tight that it's going to smash all of my mesh. And I'm just going to twist it around, and I'll 
I'll twist it around this wire frame here. Okay, and you can just trim it off. And there we go. We got one point on. <clears throat> so I want to make this kind of look like it's floating on top. So that's why I don't want to have it to squash my mesh because I really want it to just be like it's floating on top. All right, so I'll do the same thing with this side. So just push it through my frame. Tie it down. Twist it around here. Okay. All right. Then just kind of move those back. Oops. Okay. All right. So you can kind of move these out a little bit. There we go. If you have any little frays, you can just kind of trim them off a little bit. Okay. All right. So I have another one here. So let's go down to the frame here. And you just want to make sure you close that little gap back up. Okay. You can shake it. It does need to be tied down either here or there. So you can decide which one you want. And if you want to leave this on, you can leave it on there. You can tie it here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wire and I'm going to run it through this tie. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is because, remember, I want it to look like it's floating on top here. Then going to go down to the frame, run it through the frame, and tie it down. Being careful not to make it too tight. Okay, turn this off. That's what it looks like with the star on it. So see, isn't that so cute? And it does kind of look like it's floating on top. Okay, now, now what we can do is we have these cute little stars, okay? So what you want to do is just go around, see if you see any areas that looks a little thin. So right in here it looks a little thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to go down to the frame, this is wired, and I'm going to twist it around the frame, nice and tight, okay? 
And then I'm going to push these and they're going to help keep it in place. Okay? See, and what you're going to have is you're going to have a little star just kind of poking out. Okay? Like that. You see that? Alright, let's look for another spot. If you don't see a spot, you can just kind of make a spot. So we have one there. So let's put one about right here. So we'll just do the same thing. Just take it, bend it around that frame, okay, pull it up, and put your pieces back. There we go. There's number two. All right, let's do number three. So we have one here. Let's do one about right here. Okay, so push it down. and tie it to the frame. So the great thing about a wreath like this is that you do not need a ton on this wreath because it is so full all by itself that you don't really have to do a ton to give it a lot of personality. So, and there we go. Sunburst 4th of July wreath. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure had a lot of fun making it and coming up with the kit. So, there it is. All right, well, y'all enjoy and have a wonderful night. Let me know what you thought. And if you did get one of these kits and you make it, please post it either on my page or on the Facebook group um, PTNL is I would love to see how yours turned out. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all again soon. Bye-bye.